Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Orosund once again and we're going back to Copenhagen in Denmark and we're going to revisit one of my favourite Danish craft breweries and you've seen me review many beers from these guys before. So for this one then, we are going to go up to Gorlose, which is to the northwest of the main central part of Copenhagen and we're having a look at another beer from one of the Ull Collective breweries. So for this review, we're having a look at yet another beer from Gamma Brewing Company Company. This one is called the Super Studio. It comes in at 8% ABV and this one is a New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, double IPA. So I bought this beer over at Shiosk in Copenhagen. My friend Ahmed picked it up to uh, picked it up for me, so big shout out to him for that. But this beer was also released as part of the Lokal Osmoska League assortment in Sistembolaget here in Sweden, uh, being released on the 1st of October 2020. So um, yeah, I got this one a little bit early earlier than when it was released here. My box for the October release still hasn't arrived, so quite nice to uh, to have this one, although I guess I will have paid a little bit more for it than I would have through uh, Sistembolaget, but nothing wrong with that. Always keen to support the Danish craft breweries, and generally speaking, I do really enjoy reviewing the Danish beers for you here on the channel. And uh, knowing Gamma, this should be another very, very interesting beer, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it as well. If you're interested in the New England hazy style IPAs, then Gamma Brewing Company are one of the ones that you definitely want to check out. When it comes to Copenhagen as well, it's one of the best craft beer cities in the world, in my opinion. You've got Gamma Brewing, you have uh, Dry and Bitter, Ulsned Karun are doing some very interesting stuff as well, Flying Couch, Amar are one of the older and more established ones, Tool and Mika have various things around there. Uh, you have yeah, Flying Couch, um, there's now Slow Burn and also Kaleidoscope. There's a lot of really good breweries in Copenhagen these days and the Danish craft beer scene really is thriving actually. So if you get the chance to go to Copenhagen, I highly recommend that you do and definitely make sure you visit Warpigs and Ram and Tobiru. Those are the two places that I would really say you have to go if you find yourself there. Beautiful city with lots of culture and some really damn good craft beer to go with it actually and it's nice to be so close to Copenhagen and able to review these things for you here on the channel quite regularly. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. Another eight point, uh, another eight percent double IPA from Gamma Brewing Company. It should, fingers crossed, be another very good beer. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Gamma Brewing Company before, and you will no doubt see more from these guys in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to very, very regularly because I am so close to Denmark. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Gamma Brewing Company then, on to my brewery notes. So as I've told you before, Gamma Brewing Company was founded back in 2015 by four friends in Copenhagen who were bartenders in various beer bars around the city and they had often talked together about how it would be very cool to have their own brewery and they did a little bit of home brewing together as well from what I understand. So in the early stages they took in another co-owner, so the team at the brewery now is Jakob, Anders, Jesper, Koi and Nick and all of these guys had a little bit of home brewing experience and two of them had previously worked at Olsnedkinen in Copenhagen and they were the ones who purchased the former Stronzo Brewery and Gorlose, which was what went on to become Ur Collectivit which it still is today. But apparently um, the guys that formed Gamma Brewing were invited to join Old Collective It. They got a good deal on a 20 hectolitre tank and then they started the brewery without any experience of having run their own business. But fair to say it has gone very, very well for them. Um, but they've now expanded twice from what I understand and they're producing somewhere in the region of 500 hectolitres of beer per year. They're exporting to England, Scotland, uh, Ireland I think as well these days, Germany, the Netherlands, Sweden too and there's various other countries that their beers are going to now and they're continually expanding that export market and one of the owners of the brewery is also one of the co-owners of uh, the Mig or Uznedkin bar in Aarhus over on the, uh, the Danish mainland on Uyland. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, probably not, because Danish pronunciation is very hard. Uh, but O Collective it is also home to Oznedkin. 
Gamma Brewing Company and Dry and Bitter. Those are the three main breweries there. Um, Ulsnid Karun also brewed the Bad Seed beers under contract for a while before they got their own brewery, which is a way up by um, Albory on uh, Uland again. And they're another very good Danish brewery that I recommend you check out if you get the chance. And uh, Rooster also used to brew there as well before they moved on uh, and got their own facility. So there's been quite a few smaller breweries have done things at uh, Ul Collective as well. But now it is Gamma, Dry and Bitter and Ulsnid Karun who are brewing all their beers there. I do need to try and review a couple of the Oldsnade Karens once for you, but um, it's just something I haven't managed to get around to yet. Um, but as of October 2020, when I'm reviewing this beer for you, Gamma have produced around 100 different beers, and uh, they usually put out two or three different ones every month, actually. They're a very, very prolific brewery and one of the better known Danish craft breweries these days, actually. Probably one of the ones that are better known internationally, actually. Gamma and Dry and Bitter are probably the two of the Copenhagen breweries who are really starting to get out there. Um, Amar are one of the more established ones in Copenhagen, and you've got various smaller ones such as Slowburn and uh, Kaleidoscope Flying Couch. And, uh, and things like that as well. So yeah, there's Bra Beer as well that I reviewed quite recently. They've got some interesting stuff. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Gamma Brewing Company for the moment. I would highly recommend you check out these guys if you are interested in Danish beer. The Danish craft beer scene is very, very strong and the quality of the beer is very good in my experience as well. So um, yeah, check out all those links in the description below. As I said, if you want to learn more about the brewery, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn more about all those different beers that they've done so um yeah let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then as you can see the artwork on this one <coughs> is yet again very nice from Gamma Brewing Company. It strikes me as a little bit more kind of 1970s, this one, compared to uh, to some of the other ones. But yeah, this is an 8% New England double IPA at the Super Studio. It's hopped with Citra, Azaka and Galaxy. So we know Citra has those lovely kind of mango flavours with a lot of uh, tropical fruit complexity, about 14% alpha acid. Azaka has a nice bit of orangey character and a bit of pineapple as well, from what I remember, another American hop. And uh, Galaxy is an Australian hop with a really pungent, passion fruit and also a little bit of kind of lighter tropical fruit quality as well a bit of pineapple from what i remember too but the malt base in this one is extra pale golden promise malted oats road oats and uh, also some carapils and this one it uses um a london ale uh, london ale yeast at number three apparently so this one should probably be a little bit different from the ones we've had from these guys before but yeah um eight percent new england hazy double ipa however you want to call it and uh, I actually can't remember how much this one would have cost me over in Denmark. I think about 50 Danish kron uh, kroners or 45 Danish kroners, um, something like that. But um, yeah, it should be a really nice beer, this one. So without further ado, let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting then. Again, a big thank you to Ahmed for picking this one up uh, for me in Copenhagen when he was over there. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at this and see how we get on. So I think we have about two-thirds of the can in the glass there, which should be about right. So um, yeah, this looks pretty damn nice, as I always say with these Gamma beers. The Gamma beers always look great. Uh, and it's kind of what you would expect, to be honest with you. If we shine the light through this one, I would say this is one of the more kind of yellowy leaning New England doubles that I've come across. It's not the palest that you'll come across right enough. The head on this one is about between a quarter and one third of a frothy kind of white head. That's fading away to be a very, very thin foamy layer. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. There's a few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. But I mean, overall, it does seem um, very, very nice. When it comes to the level of haze that you have on this one, it is kind of what you would expect for an eight percenter. I have seen eight percenters that are more soupy and gloopy than this one. But um, yeah, it does look pretty much as you would expect for an 8% New England double. There's nothing overly surprising about this beer. If we compare it to the different fruit juices, as, as I always like to do with this particular substyle, I would say that this one is quite akin to, um, to a nice mango juice. But yeah, if I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see there is a good degree of haze to this one. And as you go up the alcohol scale with these New England beers, you know, there's more oats, there's more uh, wheat and stuff. So yeah, you are going to get gradually hazier the further up the, uh, the alcohol scale you go. But yeah, nice looking New England double IPA, this one. Nothing particularly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. So um, yeah, let's have a closer look at the aroma of this one then and just see how we get on. I'm very, very curious to see what this beer has, uh, has in store for us. 
Ooh, this one does smell a wee bit different actually. So, straight away with this beer, it's the yeasty notes that jump straight out at me. So this one um, actually has a little bit of that kind of Vermonty farmhousey type vibe to it. So you do get a little bit of that kind of vegetally woody um, kind of note out of this one. That's quite interesting. Um, I don't remember if I've had that. I think I've had that in a couple of the last Gamma beers uh, and I've commented on it, but it doesn't show up so much in the flavour. The beers always tend to be very, very smooth, but it's just something with the yeast. I've always found, uh, I've found recently that with the Gamma beers, the yeast has a real sort of farmhouse -y, woody, vegetally kind of character to it, which is quite interesting. Um, so yeah, for me with this one, this beer does have a fair little bit of a kind of woody undertone to it. And it's interesting too, because um, this is a different yeast that's in this. Because um, I think the last ones, is it WLP yeast that they use um, normally? But yeah, London Eel yeast in this one. Um, I think they use a mixture of these normally, but this one is different from the Crystal Cairn that I reviewed a wee while back for you. Um, so yeah, this one, I think... You really do get quite a bit of woodiness out of it. You get a little bit of that kind of vegetally character. So that's quite interesting. For me, there's a good little bit of a bitey wheaty note in there. Some nice white bread form in the backbone of the beer. You can get some of the oaty creaminess as well. But I really find that the yeasty notes in this one, the woodiness from the yeast and the kind of that sort of vegetally character, they really start to dominate after a little while, actually. You get quite a bit of that um, out of this one. And that's really interesting. But yeah, nice little bit of bitey wheat you note know, in there, especially when you take the aroma in a little bit more deeply. Um, some nice kind of creamy oats in there. You do have a wee bit of that kind of butterscotch, eh, I don't know if butterscotch, butter candy is probably the best way to describe it. You do get a little bit of that kind of Werther's Original type note out of this one. The more that you smell of it, you do get a little bit more of that. Some nice bitey wheat, a little bit of a kind of um, nice little bit of a, um, how do we say, yeah, a nice little bit of uh, kind of Werther's original type note and some nice oaty creaminess in there as well. So I really like how this um, I really like how this one goes together for me. This is a very very nice, um, a very nice smelling beer in terms of its malty notes. The yeasty notes do start to take a little bit of a back seat once your nose adjusts to uh, pick up the malty side of this beer. So yeah, I like how this one. Um, I do like how this one pieces together. Um, yeah. This one is uh, is pretty nice in that sense. Um, it smells like a very smooth and very creamy beer, to be honest with you. That's one of the things um, that I'm really picking up about this one. I like how that um, how that goes together. Um, but in terms of the um, the hoppy side of the beer, then so for me, this one has. Um, this one has a little touch of earthiness to it. I'm not sure exactly which hop will give you that, but you do get a little bit of earthiness out of it. It could be the yeast uh, and some of the woody notes that are giving you that, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, it's got a nice little bit of floral aromaticity. It feels quite wet and leafy in that sense as well from the aroma. You also get a little bit of a lighter grassiness there, but the green side of the hops for me, um, it does have a good little bit of uh, pungency almost, but there is just a really sort of farmhousey vibe to this beer, generally speaking. But as I've said before, with other Gamma beers I've had, that doesn't come out so much in the flavour. But yeah, nice little bit of a kind of big floral aromaticity there, a little bit of a lighter grassiness. Um, and you've also got some nice kind of uh, fruity characteristics coming out of this beer as well. So, um, yeah, on the fruity side of things, you've actually, you can pick up a little bit more of that kind of pungenty passion fruit. You know, that'll be coming from both the, um, it'll be coming from both the Citra and the Galaxy in this one, uh, but you do get a nice big rounded juicy mango in there as well. Uh, there's quite a bit of pineapple for me too, and it will be both the Galaxy and the Azaka that are giving you that. Um, so that's quite interesting. The pineapple for me comes out at the front of the nose and it's very, very juicy, but underneath that you can just get a little bit of a, a kind of orangey character out of this one, and that's the main characteristic of the Azaka. Azaka's got a very bright kind of tangerine-y um, orangey character and you can smell that right at the front of the nose. So the fruits for me, a little bit of a darker passion fruit both from the Citra and from the um, from the Galaxy. Then you've got a wee bit of mango mainly from the Citra. Um, you've got a little touch of, um, you've got quite a bit of pineapple out of this one which is the Azaka and the Galaxy I think. Then you've got the lighter kind of uh, orangey notes. So I do like how this one uh, goes together actually. The aroma of this beer um, really does grow on me after a while. Um, but it, the, as I say, it still strikes me as being really surprisingly farmhousey and um, 
kind of Vermonty almost, if you like. But yeah, as I say, that never usually kind of comes out in the flavour. The flavours are always really interesting in this one. So yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But we are going to have a taste of this one now and just uh, and just see how we get on. I'm curious to see what this beer has in store for us. So this one is the Super Studio, an 8% New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, double IPA from Gamma Brewing Company in Gorloza at Ul Collectivit. In, uh, in Copenhagen, hot with Citra, Galaxy and Zaka. Let's have a taste of this and see how we get on then. Slandia, Skull. Oh yeah. That's nice actually. That's one of the, the more kind of oily, um, it's definitely one of the more oily um, and kind of, it's definitely a bit more of a kind of grainy uh, almost, and uh, just oily New England IPA. That's one of the things that always interests me about Gamma is they always change the malt bases up a little bit in these beers, um, but they've got obviously got a very very good technique for doing them because the malt base in this is a little bit different from the last one. I think they always change the types of oats. Sometimes they change the types of wheat and stuff they're using. Um, but yeah, th this one comes across quite nicely again. Um, it's stupidly drinkable that as well, for an 8%er. That's just a bit crazy to be honest with you. But yeah, that's another um, really quite nice beer. First impression of this is that it's quite orangey and pineapple-y. <clears throat> I would definitely say that about this one, yeah, very, very orangey and very kind of, um, very kind of pineapple-y uh, New England double for me, but again, very, very well executed from Gamma Brewing, so big thumbs up to them for this, I like this beer. Yeah, um... Yeah, those kind of farmhousey, woody, vegetally notes. You do get a wee bit of that kind of in the aftertaste. You do get a little touch of that, but not as much. Again, that's what I said to you: is the these beers tend to be the, the the gamma beers in terms of the yeasty components. They do have quite a bit of yeastiness in the aroma, but quite often they're a lot smoother and more kind of drinkable in the the flavour profile. Otherwise, um, but yeah, thumbs up to Gamma Brewing once again. This one is definitely one of the more it's one of the more kind of smooth and oily um, New Englands that I've had from them actually. I like, I do like how this, this goes together. So yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this one then and just see how we go. So yeah, straight away with this beer you get that nice kind of white bready quality. That just blankets the middle of your tongue. It's a very smooth white bread quality. And you can feel that in the middle third of your palate and the back third of your palate. I would say though that the back third of your palate is distinctively kind of more grainy, to be honest with you. Um, but you can feel on the back third of your palate that the breadiness of this beer, it just thickens up a little bit. Um, towards the very back of that, that third of your tongue, you get a nice, um, you do get a touch of um, kind of grainy bitiness. Um, coming out of the beer, which is is quite nice. You get a little bit of a more kind of bread crusty um, quality to it as well, which is um, which is really very nice. Um, yeah, there is ah, there is a wee bit of a bread crusty note out of this one. You can almost feel a little bit Christmas. They said there was carapils in this, and you can definitely pick up a little bit of that kind of pilsner malty Christmas in that back third of the palate as well. It does give you the impression of a bit more graininess, but it's really that. Pilsner malt's very difficult to describe in terms of flavour, but you just get a real crispness from it. So yeah, on that back third of your palate, like I say, you feel the breadiness just kind of thickening up a little bit, and the wheat in this beer, it has a wee bit of bitiness at the very back of the tongue, but it's got a lovely kind of uh, smoothness to it as well, which is quite interesting. But yeah, you get a lovely bit of, you get a nice bit of bitiness out of it, you get some, um, you really get some. Um, you really get a lot of smoothness um, out of this too, which is um, which is very very nice. Um, 
but yeah, the further you go into the aftertaste, you will feel a little bit of woodiness developing on that back third of the palate. But yeah, a little bit of graininess towards the back of the tongue, some nice kind of smooth wheaty notes in there, and it does just feel that little bit thicker. But as you move further forward into the middle third of your palate, you can feel it just kind of slicks, it just kind of smoothens out a little bit and just becomes a little bit slicker, almost. Uh, and then you start to get more of the oaty notes out of this beer. So as you reach the front half of that middle third of your tongue, um, it's got a lovely smooth oaty quality to it. Um, underneath that, you've got a little bit of, um, uh, you do have a wee touch of a, a kind of more grainy note there. You can find that the further you go into the aftertaste, the beer does get a little bit more woody and it's almost just a little bit more slick, to be honest. So yeah, I like how that um, I do like how that um, that comes together. Um, it does. You will find in the middle of your palate, the further you go into the aftertaste, it does get more and more grainy. To be honest with you, you will find a bit of a kind of bread crusty, grainy, almost toasty grainy note coming out of the coming out of the middle of your palate there. But in the very centre of your tongue, you do get a wee touch of a tiny caramelly note out of it, um, and. Um, I don't know if it's caramel, I think it is more of a kind of biscuity, um, sort of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of thing. It's not quite as oily and butter candy like as you'll get from some of these New England IPAs these days, but there is definitely a wee bit of a slightly brown sugary sweetness in there. In the very middle of your tongue, if there's carapils in here, that would make sense. But if you go to the centre of your palate and just kind of move straight back, you'll feel that kind of Pilsner malty type uh, crispness to the beer. But then, yeah, if you go to the front corners of your palate too and then move diagonally back, you start to get some of the, um, you get a nice little kind of woody smoothness out of this one too. So it's, it's really nice how that kind of comes into play with this beer as well. But this is another, in terms of its malty qualities, this one's another, a very, very smooth uh, beer, this one with just a little touch of a kind of pilsnery like crispness to it and just a little bit of brown sugar as well. So I really like how... Um, I do like how everything goes together in this one. It gets a thumbs up from uh, from me in terms of its malt base, actually. Yeah, very nicely done. Um, in terms of the um, in terms of the the hoppy side of things then. In the back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of, uh, of earthiness there. As I say, I'm not sure exactly what hop that would be coming from. They could have another bittering hop in there, like Columbus or something. And the hops they're mentioning um, are the, the late edition ones. But yeah, as you come further forward along the sides of the palate, it does have a wee touch of kind of spiciness to it, but to me, I find this one really more aromatic rather than anything, even you know when you let the beer progress further into the aftertaste. But round the front of the tongue, um, it's definitely a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy in my mind. Then behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to uh, to push their way out of the beer. So I like I do like how um, how that goes together. Yeah, this one. The fruity side of this beer for me, it's, this is where it's quite different actually from uh, from the other ones. So if you go towards the back of that front third of your tongue, you do get a wee bit of a, you do get that kind of passion fruit you know out of the beer. It's got a bit of the pungency that you'd expect of passion fruit, but not quite as prominent as I've come across in other beers that use both Galaxy and, uh, and Citra. Although in fairness, the pungency does build a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste. Citra is of course capable of giving you a little bit of a darker grapefruity note. Um, whether that's, that would be an interesting one to see side by side in single hot beers, whether Citra gives you a more prominent passion fruit or whether Galaxy does. Um, but yeah, you do have a wee touch of a darker grapefruit, you know, then it becomes passion fruity. But as you move further forward from that, it very quickly shifts to a more kind of mango note. Then in front of that, you've got a lovely juicy kind of pineapple quality. So yeah, just at the border of the back third of your tongue, grapefruit, then passion fruit then a mango and then it really becomes a very juicy kind of pineapple -y character after that. But in front of that, in front of that kind of pineapple -y character, that's where you start to get the more oily orange um, sort of um, tangerine-y, mandarin -y kind of thing that you'd expect of the Azaka. Azaka's got a lovely balance between kind of, uh, between pineapple and um, 
between pineapple and a sort of really oily, juicy orange, and you get that out of this beer in abundance. Actually, it's got some very soft and very oily tropical fruits to it. Um, the, the the more pungent things I was saying from the passion fruit and the grapefruit, they do come out, but they're nowhere near as kind of punchy, if you like, um, as some of the other gamma beers that I've had. This is a very oily, but really quite juicy um, New England double at the same time and I, I think it finds a really good balance the softer passion fruit and the, the kind of um, tangerine mandarin type notes that you get the azaka I think comes out in this one quite nicely I really think that azaka kind of takes the four in this one whereas the citra um, kind of sits back a little bit along with the galaxy so that's quite interesting but in fairness the galaxy might be assisting the kind of pineapple notes that you get out of this beer Yeah, I think that on the kind of front edge of the tongue there, you are getting a little bit of a kind of gooseberry-ish or um, maybe even very slightly limey character um, coming out of the beer as well. And um, I have noticed that in a few IPAs, uh, a couple of New England IPAs recently, there is more of a kind of citrusy edge coming out of a number of these beers now. So for me, this one, um, you do get on just behind the very front tip of the tongue, there is a wee touch of gooseberry or a little bit of limey character and then... Um, that's most likely to come from the citra. I would I would surmise out of these uh, out of the three hops that are in this. Um, so yeah, the, the, you do get a wee touch of a kind of gooseberry uh, limey note just behind the very front curve of the tongue there, and around the very front edge of the palate, you do have just a little bit of that kind of grassy, um, zesty character as well coming out of this beer. But yeah, I will say this is another lovely example of the New England hazy double IPA style, and Gamma have done themselves pretty damn proud once again so thumbs up to them for that um, lovely lovely beer one of the more oily and kind of smoother ones that I've had from the max a little bit slicker I think as well so on that note we should talk about the mouthfeel definitely so yeah pretty you know pretty full bodied beer for me probably bottom end of full bodied carbonation is very smooth I find that this beer has a good little bit of oily character to it as well um, so yeah quite an oily um, New England double for me. There is a good bit of smoothness in there as well, in fairness. In terms of its IBUs, I think this one must be about 30-ish or 40. Maybe 40 at absolutely most. It's got a lovely little bit of floral aromaticity to it, but I find this one um, fairly smooth in honesty. Um, but the malt base, as I said earlier, very smooth, good bit of slickness to it. There is a wee bit of grainy bitiness on the back third of your tongue. You do get a little bit of that Pilsnery crispness as I was describing earlier. If you go from the centre of your palate and just back you will get a little bit of a Pilsnery crispness out of this one. But yeah, lovely kind of grainy character in there um, and then you've got some nice hoppy bitterness. You've also got some lovely oily um, juicy fruity characters as well. So I like how this, um, I do like how this goes together to be honest. Um, yeah. The, uh, the fruity side of this one for me. I love the big oily notes that it has. It's got a bit of that more pungent tropical fruit in there, but then very quickly it becomes more oily and juicy, and you also get just a wee touch of the citrusy character. So it's a really interesting transition on the fruity side of the beer. So strong pungent, soft tropical, and then you've got more oily and slightly citrusy zesty kind of quality to the beer as well. So thumbs up to, uh, to Gamma Brewing Company for this one. I think they've pulled off another very, very good New England double, but you know, having had many beers from these guys now, it really doesn't surprise me in the in the slightest, to be honest with you. So um, yeah, let's just leave it at that for this one. Another very, very nice beer from the guys at, uh, at Gamma Brewing Company. So if you are interested in Danish beer, I would recommend you check these guys out. Dry and Bitter, Ulsnedkin as well. The other two old collective at breweries are very, very good. You've also got uh, Kaleidoscope, Slowburn, Amar, Flying Couch. Um, these are some other very, very good um, Copenhagen breweries. And then Toil and Mikula are very easy to find in the, the Danish capital as well. So, pardon me. Yeah, have a go at this beer if you get the chance. You will see one more Gamma review this month, if memory serves correctly, because they did release another beer through uh, through Sistembolag as well. So you will see me review that one a little bit uh, later on. But, uh, yeah, for the moment, let's leave it at that for this one. This one was the Super Studio. An 8% New England double with Citra Galaxy and Azaka from uh, Gamma Brewing Company at Oak Lake in Gorloza in the kind of northwest of Copenhagen. A very interesting beer and definitely a very nice balance between the tropical fruits 
and the kind of citrusy zest in it. It's a really nice oily and kind of slick, well-balanced New England double for me. So yeah, once again, uh, thank you for watching my beer reviews. As always, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Gamma Brewing Company as well. Check out my social media and I will catch you guys very soon. This was the Super Studio 8% New England Hazy Double IPA from Gamma Brewing Company. And gorillas are over in Copenhagen. Slanjit, Skull, cheers. Make sure you check out this brewery and have a go at some of their beers. Cheers.